These are some of the calendars from my So Advent calendars book. There are 20 projects in here altogether. Some are quite traditional, like the Christmas trees and the little felt mittens. Some are a little bit more unusual, like my calendar girl or the cones. Some are for four weeks, some are for 12 days, some are for 24 or 25 days. Step-by-step -step instructions, lots and lots of pictures, lots of inspiration for you as well. And I think you'll find that there's something for him, for her, for the kids, for the kids' room, for the nursery, and there's even something in here for your dog as well. So the project I'm going to show you in this little video is a really simple one. It's how to make one of these cones. I love these. They're kind of all arranged together, whether it's on a shelf or your mantel shelf or a table. And then you put your gifts, if you're going to give gifts underneath there, so you just lift them up on the correct day. Really, really simple to make and loads of fun when you try and make every one of them a bit different. So one's got bells, one's got buttons. Um, the numbers are all different on them as well. You can use Christmas fabric, you can use plain fabric, and there's a little bit of free motion going on as well. So this is your list of materials and let's get on with making one. Right for each one of the cones you're going to need um, a third of a circle shape which looks like that in any size that you like so the bigger the better you can do little tiny ones as well that's entirely up to you. This one actually measures um, 12 inches in so the radius from the centre to the outside it's 12 inches across that way. Um, but let me show you how to draw that. If you've got a, a large circle template, fantastic, then just cut that into three um, uh, 60 degree angles and that'll give you the shape that you need. But if you don't have a circle template, I'll show you how to make one of these. Um, so I've got my rectangular ruler that has a 60 degree marking on it. If you don't have one of these, they're invaluable. So I would suggest that you get hold of one. I like to use Ulfa. Um, take your, oh, you need your bosal. And um, this is what makes the cones um, stand up. It's soft enough to sew through, although we're not going to with these because we're going to cut the bosal slightly smaller than the fabric. So we sew into the fabric, not the bosal. Um, and it's on the bosal that I'm going to actually draw and make this, uh, this template. So take a straight edge from your bosal. Um, I'm going to make this particular one eight inches. So I'll make this one up later on. And I'm going to draw two marks, one at the centre as that one's going to be and then one at the 8 inch mark just here. And then we're going to angle the ruler so that the 60 degree line here is sitting across that straight edge and where all of those lines join in the centre that's going to sit on my centre line here. Like that. And then that is my 60 degree angle. So I need to make a curve around here. So this was eight inches. So I need my line on this side to also be eight inches. That'll take me up to there. And I just put a mark around the corner. And then to make the curve, all I'm going to do is to simply keep my eight inch mark in that center and then arc the ruler, this with a tape measure as well, around that shape. like so, about an inch or an inch and a half apart, just so that I can actually see that nice curved line before I cut it. There. So now if, if I want to, I can actually join all of those lines together, like so. And then cut out the shape. Now I'm going to use this as a template to then cut out the fabric. And the fabric I'm cutting quarter of an inch larger all the way around. It could be half an inch larger if you're working on the larger pieces. Maybe you find that a little bit easier. So this is what I have. So you can see there's my bosal. And I've got one piece of fabric to go around the outside. And again, you can see I've cut that larger. And then I use that piece of fabric as a template for the lining fabric because these are going to be all fully lined so you don't see anything on the inside. So I don't want to see any raw edges or anything like that, uh, which is quite nice because you want these to last for years, don't you? Because you're going to be using them every Christmas. In fact, they'd make nice games as well, actually, wouldn't they? Try and guess what's underneath the cones. Um, so you might find that you're playing with them all year round. OK, so I've uh, used some 5 of height spray, which is a repositionable spray adhesive, to, um, to fix my bow to the wrong side of my outer fabric. Make sure your fabric's the right way round. The curve's going to go on the bottom. This is going to come around like this. This is a very big cone. Um, so just make sure that the fabric isn't upside down as you're doing that. 
if you don't have any spray, in fact, some of the bosal you can buy does, is single-sided fusible, so you could iron that on. Um, but put a few tacking stitches or basting stitches in there to hold it all together. Now, what I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to put my number in the middle of the front first so that the seam is at the back when you wrap it around. And then instead of using my free motion embroidery, freestyle if you like like I have with these by putting um, the stars and the swirls on there or even the zigzags that you see on this one all I'm going to do is to outline some of the shapes that are on here and I'm using a metallic thread so it should give us a little bit of a glisten so for the number I'm just going to draw this freehand I've got a scrap of fabric and I've put some um, heat and bond. This is adhesive sheeting on the back and it's one of those where you iron it onto your fabric and then peel the backing off and then re-iron it back onto your project. Now normally um, if you're using any kind of template or you could maybe print off a number from your favourite font on your PC, um, hold this up to a light and draw through it, I'd suggest that you turn it the wrong way around and draw on the back. But because I'm drawing this freehand, I'm not very good at drawing numbers back to front. So I'm just going to draw this on the front. So let's, let's do number four for this one. So I'm just doing a, a traditional style of four, like so. So let's cut that out. Being a bit wasteful there, actually. I think the nice thing with the calendars, as I, I said earlier, um, the advent calendars that you buy uh, from stores, which, which are fine, they've probably got some kind of cartoon characters all over them, um, tend to have little chocolates inside them, and they are uh, 24 days, aren't they? But an advent is simply a countdown. So that could be a countdown of four weeks, so you only need four. It could be a countdown of... So just looking for my little scissors. Um, it could be a countdown of 12 days. It can be a countdown of, uh, of as many numbers as you actually want it to be. So if you're making something that's a little bit fiddly or a bit more time-consuming, you don't have to go for the whole 25. It can get a little bit repetitive. Um, and with numbers, there's a whole section in the book about numbers and making numbers and buying numbers. If you have a look online, you can actually buy some uh, iron-on felt numbers, which is really easy, so you don't have to bother with all of this cutting out and sticking on. Okay, so that's going to go on there. So let's just take this paper backing off. And then we'll iron it on. If you're making advent calendars for your pets, by the way, I made this one for my dog. Up until last night, it was full of biscuits. This morning, it's got no biscuits left. I'm just saying, you know. Right. So that goes in the centre here. And I've got my little iron. And you just iron that off. Blue. Okay. Right, now we're going to have some fun. I've already put my free motion uh, foot on my sewing machine, um, sometimes called a darning foot. There's a few things that you'll need to know if you're not um, familiar with free motion embroidery. If you have a machine where the feed dogs drop, you'll need to drop the feed dogs because you're, you're, not, uh, the, you're going to feed the fabric through in the direction that you want to and the feed dogs pull the fabric back in a straight line. Um, my machine's got a darning plate over the top, it does the same thing. The feed dogs are still working underneath there but the darning plate stops them from moving my fabric. Um, the free motion embroidery foot has a bar on the side of it that sits on top of the needle clamp and that's what helps it to bounce up and down. Now with metallic threads, I'd recommend that you use metallic needles and the reason being the metallic threads are very fine um, they snap quite easily but they're quite coarse so they can snag on the eye of the needle they can keep breaking it'll drive you mad um, a metallic needle has like a coating around the inside of the eye which helps the um, the fibers of the thread to glide through there so there's less chance of it actually snapping so that's important to use as well so okay so I'm all threaded up and we're ready to go no, you don't. No, 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 no. Hey, no. Ah, no, no, we don't chew that. So, 
So I'm going to pop this underneath. Needle down. And away we go. So I'm taking it quite slowly, purely because again I'm using that metallic thread and I don't want it to break because I don't want to have to keep re-threading it. And I'm using quite a long stitch on this, but it, it really doesn't matter too much with free motion embroidery because you're controlling the length of your stitch as you sew. Um, so if you, if you move your work quickly, you'll get a long stitch. If you move it slowly, then you'll get a short stitch. Look at this, we've broken already. You kind of expect this to happen a few times as you're using metallic threads, so don't, don't worry when it snaps. Might be an idea to have a play on a, a little bit of scrap fabric first of all as well, just to make sure that your tension's okay. Um, different kind of threads and fabric behave in different ways, so always good to have a practice first. Just move you out of the way. Let's trim off that long piece. And that one piece. There we go. And I'm just going to go around a couple of times just to give a nice bold outline to my work. So what I'm also doing, um, I put the number four on as you can see. I've just picked out the heart designs on my fabric and I'm just very carefully doing one single outline around just some of the hearts. Not all of them, I don't think it needs it. Um, so snip that off there. So it actually looks quite quite delicate, quite subtle this one. I think one, one more just over here and then we'll be done. Right, so all I'm doing here, whoops, <laughs> it's finishing off the heart. Because uh, what I've done, I've finished the number four and I've gone around lots and lots of times to so get loads and loads of sparkle from this um, thread. And then I've just picked out some of the heart shapes and I've embroidered around those as well. Just a one line, just to keep it nice and simple. So let's start putting the whole thing together. So I'll take off the free motion or embroidery foot that's, that's already on there and we'll put the regular foot back on again. So that just unscrews. And that's my, or take you off as well. That's my darning plate. And you go. Oops, bring it on. A lot easier when uh, you're doing this with your right hand if you're right handed. Trying to use a screwdriver with your left hand. That's it. And then we'll have the foot back on again. Take my metallic thread out and we'll have some regular thread on the top. And then we'll start putting the whole thing together. There's all kinds of things you could put underneath these, you know. You could, you could make one for your pets. Keep them out of the way though. Um, so little dog treats underneath there or cat treats or whatever kind of pet you've got. It could be chocolates, it could be small toys. Nice idea with when you're making your own um, advent calendars is that you can put whatever you like in there if you want to leave a gift at all. Um, so maybe, you know, whoever you're giving this to has got dietary requirements or something like that. At least you know exactly what's going in there. Um, and also, not the way there. It doesn't have to be chocolates, does it? Um, I've made one of the advent calendars. Mine was the Christmas tree one uh, with promises inside there. So instead of a gift, you take this out and this is going to be, I promise to make you laugh. Or it could be, I promise to do the washing up. I promise to be good. I promise to make the dinner. I promise to bring you breakfast in bed. So that's quite a nice idea as well. No calories in that one. Right, let's start putting this together then. So we're going to put right sides together, the lining with the outside, and we're going to use a straight stitch and sew all the way around the curved section, just the curved section. Okay, you can put a few pins in there if you like. 
and I'm just sewing through the um, the fabric pieces, not through the bow. So remember, we cut the bow a little bit smaller. I'm just going to shorten the length of my stitch on there a little bit. That's better. So I can feel where the bosel is, so I'm not sewing through it. Or of course you can sew from the other side and you can see where the bosel is. On that side. We're all falling off the table now. take this out and we're going to open the whole thing up so that the side seams are going to be together like so. See what's happening now can't you? So I'm going to start sewing from that side seam so that I know that the seam matches at the top at the join here. So those two pieces together and straight down that seam. Again, just avoiding sewing through the bosal. And put reverse stitch at the end there. And then we'll do the same on the lining side. But on the lining side, we need to leave a gap of around about four or five inches so we can turn it the right side out. So again, just line up those edges. There's my gap. Move that along. And back down to the point. Then we'll turn the whole thing the right side out. the point through. Not worried about trimming off the points or anything like this. It's only, it's only that link calendar. It's a bit loopy. So this comes out here. Like so. That leaves me a gap in the side of the whole thing here which I need to sew over. So pull the two edges of that gap outwards, the seams will fold in, and then we're just going to top stitch across the fold. Well, so finished with you now. Let's trim off these threads. And then we push the lining inside the cone. Right up into the point. And we could give that a press. I wouldn't give it a press, I'd give it a steam. So just give it a blast of steam from your iron. Um, a couple of final things. I'm going to sew all the way around the, the bottom um, just to edge stitch and that's going to help to keep the, uh, the layers together. And then I'd put a hand stitch right through the point of the, uh, the cone to hold the lining in place because you know, gravity says that it's going to drop down at some point. So let's take the accessory compartment off my sewing machine. Pop this over the free arm. There you go. I'm lengthening the stitch again a little bit. We don't need a small stitch on a top on a a small stitch on a top stitch. <laughs> Isn't necessary. Um, if you're making plain ones and you've got decorative stitches on your sewing machine, then that would be quite nice. A lot of machines, this one included, have like a little star stitch that looks like a snowflake. Or maybe you've got holly leaves or something like that. Or even just a zigzag stitch, just to make it a little bit different. Oh, 
did you come from? That's my cone all finished.